Well then, we've not done one of these for a while, have we? Hello everyone and welcome back to Dice Hard. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at Flamme Rouge, which is French, but don't hold that against it. Flamme Rouge is a competitive racing game for two to four players in which you and your friends will be in charge of competing teams in the Tour de France. This game appears to be set in the 1930s though, so the modern tactics of pumping your bicycle boys full of nandrolone need not apply. This era is more charming than the contemporary image of the sport, and that is evident in the artwork. From the fun and cheerful caricatures of the riders, to the randomly parked tractors and ambling wildlife on the track pieces, Flamme Rouge is just nice to be around when it's set up. And if your friends have never seen a modern board game before, they'll definitely want to try this out when they see it set up on your dining room table. Well, enough about ambling goats and nandrolone. Let's do a traditional Dysard potted rules explanation, which, thanks to this svelte newspaper themed manual, is mercifully brief. On your turn, you're going to draw cards from each of your rider's decks. Play one for each rider, and then pop the rest of your hand underneath your deck to be shuffled in later. In the next phase, your riders move the number of spaces printed on the card, and that's it. That's the sum of actions you'll be making in this game. Flam Rouge is incredibly simple. You see, while you can only take a single action on your turn, the rest of the rules relate to certain considerations you must make before deciding which of your precious cards to play. And this is what turns Flam Rouge into a delicious sparring match between you and your friends, which can either make you feel like a complete genius or a complete idiot. First thing you have to consider is that your deck is finite. You're given a handy cheat sheet which shows the quantity of cards in your deck, but once they're gone, they're gone. So, are you going to spaff your sprinter's high value cards immediately in the hope of catching your opponent's cold? That could be risky though. What if your fastest rider no longer has enough energy at the end of the race to pass the finish line? So you save your fastest cards for the end of the race then, but then your rider gets bogged down by the pack, his mid-speed cards have become useless, and he's never in the position to pull off that daring final sprint. Hmm. Just like in real life, being a beautiful bicycle boy is tiring work. If your rider has too much open road in front of them, they'll pick up these exhaustion cards. Probably not in focus, but it doesn't matter. Now these are nigh on useless two movement space cards go into your deck and clog the inner workings of your well-oiled machine. Now, one thing you could do to avoid this would be to use your roller to shield your sprinter. Have them take the brunt of the wind resistance and then have your sprinter just plow through and win the race. Seems simple, right? Hmm. Then there's slipstreaming. Now, if you're clever, you will end your rider's turn with a one space gap between the rider in front. Then, your rider will use that character's uh, slipstream to get one free space of movement, making your cards much more efficient. If your rider is at the head of a pack, he'll take that pack with him as each rider expertly maneuvers to take advantage of the track state. So, the best thing to do would be to keep your riders one space apart. Playing a five card from one rider and a three card from another means you're absolutely guaranteed to benefit from slipstreaming, right? Hmm. Planning the perfect moves is easy when the track is empty. You can plot slipstreaming, alternate your riders to share exhaustion, nice and simple. But there are three other bloody bank bastards sat around this table and they're all plotting the same thing. And that can mean that one turn that plays out in your head like this, I move my sprinter seven to tuck him behind this guy so he doesn't get any exhaustion, and then I move my roller five, which gives him some slipstreaming, and he slips in there ahead of the pack and nice and safe, avoiding exhaustion as well. And that is how you flam the rouge. Yeah! Ends up looking like this. <laughs> and that's not all. Some knobhead has put mountains everywhere. Mountains, Gandalf! Yes, mountains! They add another consideration. If you're ascending the mountain, your high speed cards are useless as your speed is capped at 5 because, you know, mountains are big. And conversely, when you're going downhill or down mountain, your low numbered cards are a minimum of 5. So your useless 2 point uh, exhaustion cards can be thrown out the window as you rocket down the mountainside like a lycra clad lightning bolt. That took me three takes to say that. Each of these things combined with the cunning and unpredictability of your friends makes for a delightful experience. You'll be trying to outfox each other whilst also taking into consideration the terrain, the energy levels of your riders, your positioning. It's as the French would say, 
Bellissimo. That's not French. You're not French. Flamme Rouge is a great game to buy if you're new to the hobby or if you're trying to ensnare friends and family to indulge your cardboard addiction. It's easy to learn and full of opportunities to make interesting decisions. In many ways, it's the perfect gateway game. It's got a grounded theme that's easy for anyone to pick up upon and the simple mechanics you can just run with immediately. But there is a lot of tactical depth here for you to get your teeth into as you grow accustomed to the rules. And with expansions, you can add things like weather effects, new track pieces, and also there's the rules for a season and more players where uh, exhaustion carries over into the next race, making each decision just that much more important. Flamme Rouge definitely gets the dice hard seal of approval. Thank you very much for watching this video, it really means a lot to us. If you liked what you've seen here, click on that subscribe button and Dice Hard will bring you all sorts of lovely geekiness every week. Why not even pop over to our website at dicehard.net? And if you want other people to stumble across our channel, feel free to shove this video in front of their eyes at every opportunity. Tati bye!